Hello, one and all, and welcome to another episode of The Damage Report with me, John Adarola, and my distinguished Monday accompaniment, Francesca Fiorentini of the Bituation Room. Francesca, how's it going? It's good. How are you? I'm good. I'm glad to have you back. Thanks to Viviana for filling in last Monday. You were off on your honeymoon in Hawaii, and now you're back. Yeah, I wasn't in Hawaii, but close. It's fine. Mexico, was it not Hawaii, whatever? I thought you said it was Hawaii. Okay, I apologize. I, I thought this entire time you were in Hawaii. No. Um, well, but, I just but other learned than that, that honeymoons are supposed to be a month long, by the way. Someone told really? me that. Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, really? How's five days? Like, you exactly. want to give me money for that month long? Yeah, uh, interestingly, uh, my wife and I weren't able to have our honeymoon because of the onset of the pandemic a few years ago. We are now planning later this year a trip to. Mexico to finally have our honeymoon. Nice. So, so you chose Hawaii. We're gonna do Mexico. I like it. I like it. <laughs> I'm kidding. Anyway, um, no, our country doesn't let you take like three days off after you've had a kid. You think we're giving people honeymoon time off? No, we should be um, taking this day should. as Juneteenth. Like yesterday was Juneteenth. Today should be a holiday. I'll take it. Let's do that. Yeah. Let's go okay. for that. Anyway, we're glad to have you back regardless. It also means, mm -hmm. by the way, that the uh, the top 10 list that we do each week for tier two and tier three members over on YouTube uh, will resume. Uh, when last we spoke, we did the top 10 pros of being married. And now it's time for the cons. So we're gonna be diving into that a little bit later on. It should be fun and totally serious, by the way, not no, jokey yeah. at all. This is serious no. stuff. Anyway. Because one of my top 10 for getting married was to be able to say, my wife. <laughs> or my <laughs> husband, so you know, serious, serious, so serious stuff. stuff, serious stuff. Anyway, along the way, we got a lot that we got to talk about politically. Not only the uh, Texas GOP convention, which was uh, both absolute madness and perfectly representative of the state of the Republican Party, so that's going to be fun. Uh, everybody's getting attacked up in here. An absolutely horrendous political ad dropped just before uh, our show today, so we're going to be diving into that. We got a Monday menace. You might be able to predict who it is if you've been paying attention to um, uh, political news over the past few days. Biden's fallen off his bicycle and we got air taxes, we got a lot of stuff. So in advance of that, if you wouldn't mind hitting the like button and sharing the stream, that would be great so the people know we're live. And if you wanna send us, send us any comments, tweets, super chats or anything like that, we'll respond as we go. But with all that said, Francesca, are you ready to start the show? I think so. Okay, in that case, we're gonna just dive right into the insanity with this. I pass McCain. Look at I pass McCain right here. You're a rhino. You're a globalist. You're a globalist rhino. You're a globalist rhino. Kid, you're a globalist rhino. I pass McCain. I pass McCain. I pass McCain. You're a globalist rhino. You're a globalist rhino. So that was Representative Dan Crenshaw being accosted this weekend by a right wing. I guess he would probably say activist, but honestly, at this point, what's the difference between a conservative activist, a member of Congress, a figure in the media? They all do and say the exact same thing, but it was a crazy person who accosted him. And he had this one opportunity on film to really stick it to Dan Crenshaw. And so he just repeated over and over again, I patch McCain. And globalist rhino, mm -hmm. over and over. That was all he had. I guess he hadn't prepped much. I don't know. Um, bear in mind the uh, eye patch McCain. Uh, that is a term for Crenshaw that was coined by Tucker Carlson after he decided that it was okay to mock the fact that Dan Crenshaw wears an eye patch. Uh, back before he decided Tucker Carlson that he wanted to attack him, he attacked Pete Davidson for making a joke about the eye patch. That was unacceptable. But when Tucker Carlson himself wanted to do it and get that to be a thing that the right does now, that's perfectly acceptable. Um, but Francesca, this is the site of you know the the, the Republicans were gathering in Texas there, and uh, this is the sort of person who I guess comes to those events to just harass and accost and get a little bit physical. Let's. Let's keep it real uh, with uh, the, the congressman and his entourage. Yeah, um, I mean, he had a camera, so definitely member of the media. As mm -hmm. we now Jerry all, our, <laughs> we're now all members of the media with our camera phones. No, I, I think it's really important that the person who coined that phrase, I patch McCain, 
is not a someone from the left. Uh, the person he got mad at was a comedian. So let's put that aside um, for initially calling out his eye patch. But generally, when it comes to Greg Abbott in a wheelchair, well, that is not a line of attack. Um, may, number one, because we're not ableist, and number two, mm-hmm. because there's a million other reasons to attack people like Dan Crenshaw and Governor Greg Abbott. Like this yeah. is this is what we do. We generally like try to rise above and focus on issues. And of course, it is really, really wrong to make someone make fun of someone's disability. But if it's Tucker Carlson, well, that then it's exactly. all gravy. And as long as he can still have Dan on his show occasionally, and Crenshaw doesn't want to call that out. This was probably just a one-time thing. And I think you're gonna see instead of if this were someone from the left. He'd freak out about it, tweet about it, go insane about it, go ape about it. But no, no, no. Yeah. Um, let's just pretend yeah, he, it never happened. So he is going to criticize the guy. He doesn't specifically talk about that line of attack. He doesn't actually address either of them. That smearing him as a globalist rhino. I mean, you, you like if you know about the right, you know what he's going at there. I guess. I, I, look, Dan Crenshaw again has plenty of things that you can attack him for based on. Uh, based on policy, or even if you didn't want to dive into the policy, the fact that this guy regularly films like fake action movies of himself, that's a perfectly good shallow reason to attack him. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, his entourage or a witness, I should say, of what you just saw says that they got physical, uh, hitting them with cameras. His campaign manager was assaulted by being pushed aggressively into a pillar. And you can see that some of the people who were ejected from the event were wearing Proud Boys gear. So just a little heads up that um, as uh, I, I don't know exactly which historical um, you know comparison you want to make for the Proud Boys of what position they'll have in this fascist movement in comparison to what other armed groups did in past fascist movements. Um, but apparently they will not only be trying to assault members of the LGBTQ plus community or Antifa or Democrats, they're also going to be going for Republicans that aren't sufficiently awful. Now, as yep. I said, Dan Crenshaw did respond to this tweeting. Uh, this is what happens when angry little boys like, I don't even want to say the guy's name, it's the dude who talked, who accosted him, don't grow up and can't get girlfriends, shruggy. Uh, I, I don't know if the guy has a girlfriend or not. I know that the incel movement is a burgeoning part of the right. But now that guy responded by saying he's the real victim of Dan Crenshaw's private police force. So I guess Dan Crenshaw is an authoritarian with his own Jack booted thugs, I don't know. The whole thing is nonsense, literally just like on the right. Can you just have a single actual policy? Something that actually acknowledges the economic crisis that America is undergoing. I don't know, it's all nonsense, Francesca. I, but refresh our memory, what was the transgression, right? What did Dan Crenshaw do? Did he try to say one person, one vote? Did he like semi uphold (laughs) democracy? Did he, you know, like what was it? Did he criticize think, Trump in any minor way? Yeah, no, I, I do think that he's been a little bit more critical of Trump. Like, not like, you know, Trump is singularly responsible for January 6th, but I think he's been a little bit more critical. And I think he's also been willing to criticize the, you know, the the new insane uh like cohort in uh congressional Republicans. He's sure. been a little bit more critical of the Boberts and the Marjorie Greens and all that, which is uh, to his credit. It's the only thing that's to his credit, but that is to his credit. And so why wouldn't he be attacked for that? I was crazy before they were crazy. Exactly. I prefer my brand of crazy to this day. Mm-hmm. What do you do for America? You know that. Yeah. Remember how Trump made fun of your wife, and you know, then you God, go become God, best God, friends God, with Trump. I know, but why do you do that? You go become best friends with Trump after he makes fun of you and your wife. Why do you do that? I, I understand you don't want it's to defend you're a Texas, coward. and you don't want. No, to see, I do liberty. love America. See, you don't. You care more about the border between uh, Ukraine and Russia than you care about the border between Texas and Mexico. Why is that? Why do you care God, about God that? Bless you. We're done. I know, but why are you a globalist? You're a globalist, but you know it, Ted. Hey, Teddy, you're a globalist. We're done. We're done. You're a globalist, Ted. You know that, but. But, and that's why you're a coward and a liar. And you know that, and I know that. And that's why you're afraid to stand up for it. When sure. people were freezing and dying, you were in Cancun, Mexico. You remember that? You remember when you're at the all inclusive buffet when people were freezing? Go away. No, but do you remember that, Ted, when everybody was freezing? Yeah. Remember that when people were dying? What were you doing? Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. That is Senator Ted Cruz doing what he does best get owned by literally everyone. In that case, apparently a right winger. Ted Cruz tried to sort of brush off the criticism, like implying that this guy was a lefty. But 
No, and, and it's not impossible that he could have been pretending to be a right winger, but based on this rhetoric, talking about the border and calling him a globalist because I guess because Ted Cruz wanted to aid Ukraine in some fashion, I don't know. Um, that was enough for, for him to attack Ted Cruz. And Ted Cruz really didn't have anything to respond to that, the, the, the about the claims about Trump, which are totally accurate. He did uh, debase himself for Donald Trump after Trump uh, mocked him and his family. And uh, you know him fleeing during that horrific uh, power outage uh, in Texas when the grid collapsed, he had no response. I had no response to really anything. Um, he just sat there looking like an idiot. Now, some of what the guy was saying is absolutely crazy. Again, the idea that Ted Cruz becomes a globalist when he supports military aid to Ukraine. But presumably that same right winger doesn't think that like us selling tons of weapons to Saudi Arabia makes Donald Trump a globalist. I don't know, it's it's, it's very opportunistic the way that they deploy that phrase, by the way. In any event, uh, Ted Cruz decided to go to that event. He should have known he was going to face some of this from the even crazier right, but what do you think? No, absolutely, and he was spot on, like you're saying, on like half of them and half of them not, which is why I do think it's important that we cover that those angles of critique. Like, yeah, why did you fold and start to uh, campaign for a guy who insulted your entire family? <laughs> Maybe called your dad the Zodiac killer. Like, why did you leave your home state when it was in need? Like those things, I think sometimes certain media outlets can sort of be like, we're above that. Like, no, 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 that's the most important um, pieces of Ted Cruz's most recent awful legacy. Um, it's not about like well, where he stands on his legislative priorities. Like, no, we know where he stands. Um, but what's crazy to me about it is Ted Cruz is gonna go home and think about how he was called a globalist and be like, you gotta do better, Ted. I you know, gotta, that's you gotta be fear. crazier. You gotta psych yourself. You right? Because whereas, like, when one is heckled. When there are, you know, troll comments in the chat right now, you don't listen to them. That is stupid. It is number one, it's a minority of people. And number two, it's like, you know, but see, we have a mission, we have a purpose, and where there's some sort of moral center or broader project. But mm -hmm. his broader project and the broader project of the GOP is just to literally like as cra as crazies call them out, go do what that crazy wanted me to do. Yeah, Get right. more of the crazies. And John, don't you think it's gonna get worse? Like, come on, like as 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 more and more extreme as the base gets, the, it, nothing's gonna be good enough for them, right? I know that that is that is very much the fear. I mean, look, we know we've experienced like um, you know sort of opportunistic like uh, you know parasites on the left who exist <laughs> only to elevate themselves through ever shifting purity tests or whatever with no actual plan for change no none of that we know that um those people thankfully uh, don't have any influence and they're only in it for themselves they don't really care about having any influence as long as they're making a lot of money um this is their entire party though i mean this is this is the actual party like now it might be that ted cruz is the senator and this guy is some rando, but more and more politicians who are indistinguishable from that rando are getting elected literally every election. So uh, not good for the right. By the way, um, John Cornyn was also uh, heckled at that event, this time while giving a speech. Um, people in the crowd shouted uh, that he was a traitor. Uh, they said, no red flags, don't take our guns. Wow. It's because he might support a bill that does basically nothing, except it does have some provisions for federal red flags laws. And what I love about that is the right would love, they always love to say, it's not about the guns, it's about the mental health, implying that it's not that the guns themselves are a problem, it's only that there are some people who shouldn't have them. So what should we do if we identify someone who shouldn't have one? Nothing, we should do literally nothing. They should be able to have their guns and we should only talk about what they did after they did it. When they go and shoot someone up, then we can talk about it again, but don't stop them. Don't stop people with a demonstrated track record of violence from getting lethal weapons. That is what people were shouting at John Cornyn, noted leftist. And even anyway, though, and I think we have to remember like who goes out of their way to like get press, not press passes, get passes to go to this thing. Who's got the weekend to spare? Like it mm -hmm. is not the whole of even the Republican Party. And there was a new Fox News poll out just today that shows the vast majority of their viewers believe in red flag laws. Believe yeah, that there should do. be, yeah, exactly, background checks and 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 all that, and that 20, 18 year olds shouldn't get access to assault rifles. On and on and on and on. So again, like, you have 
a my extremist minority and an extremist minority in power and they're both talking across the majority of Americans even though maybe some of those people I wholly disagree with on many other issues but on so many of them we can work together and do agree so it's just it's just bizarre i mean trump yeah. really sped up the like 4chan to mainstream pipeline to the point where <laughs> again no one's Right, it's just, well, what do the message boards want us to do, you know? Yeah, and they do exactly that. And by the way, look, a case could be made that John Cornyn is doing exactly what they should want. What they don't want is strong gun control, okay? Now, what is the best way you, you can possibly get people to move on and forget a little bit? Give them something that can be pitched as if it's gun control when it barely is. He's John Cornyn is helping to pass that. If he opposed it, if enough Republicans opposed it that literally nothing happened, then maybe you would have even longer simmering desire for gun control that could lead to something real, something substantive. But but again, it, it's the it's the fake purity over even like cold hard pragmatism. From their point of view, this should be a good thing. They're in the minority in the, the with the presidency and both chambers of commerce, and mm -hmm. still barely nothing is going to be done. And they consider even that to be unacceptable. Anyway, we got to get on to one other aspect of what happened at this weekend's GOP convention in Texas. One group found that they were not going to be allowed to set up a booth. That is the log cabin Republicans there. They put out a statement saying inclusion wins, which makes the Texas Republican Party's leadership's decision to exclude the Texas log cabin Republicans from their convention, not just narrow minded, but politically short sighted. Now, if you're not familiar with the log cabin Republicans, it is an advocacy group for conservatives within the Republican Party who identify as gay. And um, that's been obviously a difficult position for a long time considering how much uh, virtually every conservative absolutely despises them. Uh, particularly in the past few years where uh, basically every gay person in the country has been pitched by the right as not only someone who is making some sort of fundamental sin, who deserves uh, neither uh, quarter nor respect. But now they're also all trying to have sex with your kids simultaneously. So that is that's rough, honestly, if you are a gay conservative. And so now they're being banned from this convention. And and I get it. They're conservatives. They're gonna advocate for their position. That is their right. But when they say like inclusion wins, they're being narrow-minded. But do you not get that it isn't just that they're not including you, they're not doing that inclusion, which again would be to their benefit because they're it's more votes for them. They despise the very concept of inclusion. They think that inclusion is surrender to people that they don't respect, including you. I, like it's it's tough, and you got to keep trying because I guess you know you're a group that wants tax cuts or whatever, so you're gonna you're gonna try to get the right to win. But I don't know, can you really be that shocked, Francesca, when the group that has been demonizing you and people like you in a variety of ways every single day, trying to dispatch violent mobs to hunt you down? That they're not going to let you set up a booth at their party. It's disgusting, but Good. it's it's predictable. I mean, totally. I mean, it's the same way I feel about women in the Republican Party. I'm just like, good luck with that. Have fun. No, no, no. That's your fight, not my fight. But it is very uh, indicative, and 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 especially because not so long ago you had right wing stars who were openly gay, mind you, cis and male and white, um, who mm. were part of the early MAGA movement. I'm thinking Milo Yiannopoulos, a guy named Lucian Wintrich or whatever the hell his stupid name is. Like there were multiple little stars who were rising and they were openly gay and it sort of felt yeah. like, oh damn, there's a new, you know, page being turned here, um, not to say that those people were vilely racist uh, and horribly exclusionary in their own right. But it felt like, okay, but if you're a gay, a white gay man with some money and you hate other groups, that's sort of the angle here and you're welcome. Well, not anymore because of course we're now grasping at whatever kind of culture war straws you can grasp at because things are in such a fever pitch. In terms of the economy, in terms of inequality, in terms of healthcare, in terms of literally everything, that now we're going back to like, um, dressing in drag is pedophilia. Yep. What? Right? Like that's anything, anything. Being gay is pedophilia. Yeah, that that's what they want you to believe. They it just 
Everything is everything. Like if you're in drag, you're trans. Well, you're not, but they're just saying that you are. Oh, also right. you're a pedophile. Literally every person. Is it not a little bit? Like I can't help but think. I obviously there are there are pedophiles in this country. It's terrible and disgusting. But if you think that like everyone's a pedophile, is it possible that you're saying more about yourself than about society? Because I personally think yeah. that pedophilia is horrifying and disgusting. So horrifying, so disgusting. That by its very nature, almost no one would be one. But you think it's actually very reasonable. <laughs> Lots yeah. of people would do that. Right. That's a weird position to hold. <laughs> anyway, I, I whatever. I've lost that battle. Okay, everybody's a pedophile, I guess. Okay, now uh, speaking about the banning of the group, the state Republican Party chair for the Republicans of Texas, Matt Rinaldi says, I think they made the right decision based on our rule on booth approval. Approval and get a load of this. I think it's inappropriate given the state of our nation right now for us to play sexual identity politics. But do you get what he's saying there? Simply letting them have a booth would be playing sexual identity politics. They're conservatives. Yep. It's a group of conservatives that want business deregulation and they want more climate change, all the good stuff for conservative. Mm -hmm. No, simply having it is identity politics in the same way that when you as Disney, uh, start the show Miss Marvel, you're playing identity politics. How? What does the show like have uh, politics in? No, but it just has someone who isn't white and that is playing politics somehow. For some reason though, launching a show with a white person that is not playing politics, I'll never understand it. It's a weird party. But again, I'm not trying to be a part of that party. The log cabin Republicans are. And so I don't understand why they're so surprised by this. And the thing is, the, the, the response to that statement is almost worse. The president of the log cabin Republicans of Fort Worth is Jason Baldwin. He said he was annoyed about being lumped in with people who support allowing children access to puberty blockers or taking the to drag shows. He said it is an identity politics to go against his party in support of gay marriage. Again, he wasn't even saying that one of your positions was identity politics. He was saying you being there is identity politics. And you've just been banned from the convention. Yeah. And you feel like, but no. I'm not one of the bad ones. The trans group, they're the bad ones. All yeah. those those people who like like drag queens are the bad ones. No, don't hate me, hate them. Don't kill me, kill them. Do you see how much of a losing position that is? But but it's constant. But that's the game they're playing. And and fascism requires this of minority groups. I mean, you see it in religious groups constantly, people pitting one another against each other like, no, 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 I'm not Muslim, I'm Hindu. You know what I mean? That kind of degree yeah. and and it's all wrong, it's all awful. And look, I say it's their fight that they're barking up the wrong tree, but that being said, if and when they want to join the actual struggle against fascism, if they want to join the right side, open arms, baby. Like I mean, I I think it's I think what it's so interesting when you have conservative gay conservatives and honestly women in the conservative in the Republican Party it's like they love the martyrdom of being unique right and they somehow think well if I go the other way if I'm a liberal if I accept everybody I'm just another feminist right and it's like mm. yeah no, you're still special and we still need you. You can still join the fight. So I would just say to any gay conservative or any woman who is in the Republican Party now who might be somehow stumbling upon this show, we welcome you. You have a role yeah. to play. Uh, no one is going to deny you your booth or deny you your particular. We can talk about the other stuff. We can talk about you know the 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 political stuff. We can create strategic alliances on this. Yeah. But uh, hate and bigotry. That doesn't fly. Yeah, the, the only way they're gonna deny you on the Democratic side of booth is if you're uh, progressive. No, that's oh, it. Yeah, oh we, yeah. We, TYT was allowed <laughs> at the 2016 conventions, but the digital convention of 2020, we were denied credentials for. Why? I don't know, just to spit in the face of progressives, I don't know. When um, it was but a anyway, digital booth, they had like more booths yeah, available digital. and they're like, no. no it's artificial scarcity. <laughs> um, but no, as you said, there's the martyrdom thing, but then there's also the cold hard financial calculation that uh, when you are a part of a group that they absolutely despise and want to at least push out of society, if not actually wholesale annihilate, um, you can make a little bit of money and get a little bit of notoriety along the way towards your group's destruction by telling that group that they're right to hate you. 
and that works for a lot of different groups on the right. There are women who are do, who do that. There are gay Republicans who do that. There are look honestly, there are leftists who do that. They yes. they go on there to say that the right is correct, so they can yes. get a little bit of money, a little bit of notoriety. Oh, their movement's doomed. They're helping to dig the grave for their movement <laughs> or their social group, but it but buys they got nice them house, clicks. I guess they, they got the, the clicks. Click. Anyway, super fast final move because I'm getting uh, animal memes in my doc now. Uh, so let's see. Uh, they're also uh, they're they want to they in the convention they're talking about banning gender modification, sexualizing kids. Like you guys are the only ones who are constantly thinking about the sexualization of kids. Honestly, uh, let's see. Calling homosexuality an abnormal lifestyle choice. It's 2022. They've moved on literally not at all in 20 years. They want to force kids to be, to learn that life begins at fertilization, that's not a scientific fact, that is literally just your interpretation of it. Um, make them listen to ultrasounds, that's what they want kids to do. They're also, by the way, God. against propaganda for kids. They wanna repeal the 16th Amendment, which was what created the federal income tax. Also, they approved a resolution declaring that President Biden was not legitimately elected. They wanna get rid of the 1965 Voting Rights Act. They oppose efforts to classify carbon dioxide as a pollutant because climate change is awesome. It's gonna be totally great for Texas, by the way. Climate change is going to be awesome for Texas. Anyway, they support prayers returning to schools. They are, after all, the only defense against AR-15s. And since those are definitely going to be in Texas schools, why shouldn't prayer be too? That's what they're doing in Texas. That's your Republican Party. That we're okay, we got CO2 it. CO2 has final, final more point. rights than women. That's all I got to exactly. say. Yeah. <laughs> the future okay. carbon greater than women. Okay, thank you. We are about to launch into more news. Before that, though, if you wouldn't mind hitting the like button if you haven't already. If you have, you can hit it a second time, but I will require you to then hit it a third time as well. Got to keep everything <laughs> odd. Now, with that, let's jump into the news starting with this. Merrick Crichton's Navy SEAL, and today we're going rhino hunting. The rhino feeds on corruption and is marked by the stripes of cowardice. Join the MAGA crew, get a rhino hunting permit. There's no bagging limit, no tagging limit, and it doesn't expire until we save our country. <sighs> okay, so that is Eric Greitens, who is a current Republican candidate for Senate, former governor of Missouri before he resigned in disgrace for a number of different scandals that we will talk about soon. You've heard about them before on the network. And now, Francesca, we get to be in the fun position of uh, saying uh, that we get that he knows everything about what he just did. It is not on us to say, hey, did you realize that in saying that he's gonna hunt for rhinos, Republicans in name only, he's using violent imagery amidst a time in his party where there's an increasing normalization and a thirst for political violence. And so he seems to be encouraging people to uh, violently attack or possibly kill Republicans that he doesn't agree with, except that he knows literally all of that. He knows exactly why he did everything in that ad. Holding the shock in himself, throwing in a flashbang, identifying himself as a SEAL, which he's not supposed to do in official campaign advertisements. Having a bunch of people in tactical gear and encouraging people to sign up and hunt rhinos themselves. It is absolutely disgusting, Francesca, and it'll probably make him more popular, I would imagine, inside of his own party. Yeah, I mean. Obviously, Republican on Republican violence uh, is something we need to be investigating more and talking about. And we don't mm -hmm. ever talk about it in the mainstream media. Um, so I'm, I'm just like, well, I'm glad it's not socialists for now. But it's just, it is so Simpsons to have like a smiley politician be like, hey, hey, hey guys, I'm out here hunting rhinos. That means people, that's right. I'm advocating shooting people. Anyway, in my campaign, like it's just so <laughs> like bizarre and 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 satirical that you're like this has to be an utter joke and yet that's where we're headed because their milky brained base act sees that and is like, "Oh yeah, we should hunt right." Like yep. I know. They're going to love that. It was closing uh, like, in on a million views just this morning. Like the right is going to absolutely eat it up. I don't know if they know that he means Republican in name only. I'm not 
or if like they're actually gonna go try and find rhinoceroses. I mean, some of them do. That that is a thing that those on the right do. Um, I know. I think most of his uh, his target audience are well aware of what he is uh, saying there. By the way, I also love that he inadvertently, like, he gets a lot accurate. Uh, as people are pointing out, they didn't try to knock on the door; they just knocked it down. That reads for uh, when law enforcement breaks in. It's literally an empty room, and yet before even looking, they throw a flashbang, and that's how you end up killing pets and kids, as cops have in the past. They run a bunch of people in there. Eric Greitens, despite being surrounded by people wearing full body armor and helmets, like a doink, just runs in there with no helmet whatsoever. Probably would have been taken out first. There's a lot that's actually accurate about how <laughs> stupid law enforcement can be. Um, but I do want to challenge Eric Greitens um, because I know that you think, look how bold and aggressive and daring you're being by using this imagery. Uh, but I would ask you this, uh, which rhino do you want to hunt? Which mm -hmm. Republican in name only? Do you want to use your guns against, metaphorically or literally? Why are you being a wuss who refuses to identify a single person? Why are you speaking so vaguely? We know you're thinking of people. You want your base to think of particular people. They might be current sitting senators. Which current Republican senator do you want to be killed? Why are you being such a coward and not identifying it? But anyway, the ad has already been taken off of Facebook. It's still, as far as I could see, live on Twitter, and it's probably all up on YouTube. It is clearly encouraging violence. And by the way, understand the context here. We're having a renewed national conversation about whether Donald Trump encouraged a violent mob to murder the Republican vice president because he's a rhino. He wasn't willing to do what the MAGA movement wanted. And this guy says, no, I need to get on this. So again, Trump did this. There were no consequences. What did we say would happen if there were no consequences? More people would do it. And here you go, more people are doing it. And if you think that's the last ad like that that you'll get out of Eric Greitens or other people, you're out of your mind. Agreed. No, Sophie, I gotta, I gotta tell people really fast. I gotta, I gotta. Eric Greitens, by the way, resigned in 2018. He's had a number of scandals. One involved uh, the allegations from a woman, his former hairstylist, who said that during a 2015 affair, he tied her to pull up rings in his basement, tore her clothes, forced her to perform oral sex to release her so that she could go to work and took nude photos of her to use potentially for blackmail. Now these are just allegations at this point, but um, Ugh. that's your guy, that's your guy. She says that she has photo proof of this by the way, but nobody seems to be investigating at this point. 50 anyway, shades of can I just 100%. say, yeah, I'm so tired of like, just I'm tired of predators and men. She was your girl, weren't you having an affair with her? Couldn't that have been consensual? Couldn't that have been decided upon? But no, now she's speaking out about it. Ugh, you're so, there's so many creeps out there. It's so disgusting that anyway, I'm, I'm I digress, I'm sorry. Yeah. We, we got yeah, By the way, he's ha he's had other uh, ads where he just fires guns, and that's not unique. Basically, every Republican does. Every one of them, by the way, if they saw that being done by politicians in another country, would absolutely lose their minds. They would pee their pants. They'd be inconsolable. Um, but that's all they have. And why wouldn't they? If you're not just shooting a gun in your ad, you might have to actually talk about a policy, and they can't have that. Anyway, with that said, let's move to our next block, starting with this. <laughs> so we do have a Monday Menace for you, and it comes from this. This interview I came across on the Financial Times with Hillary Clinton, and it's headlined, We are standing on the precipice of losing our democracy which I don't disagree with. So why would she be the Monday menace? Well, it's because of what she wants to happen because of that threat. So I'm gonna read you just a little bit from the Financial Times. They say, I cannot allow the lunch to end without questioning the direction of her party. I say the Democrats seem to be going out of their way to lose elections by elevating activist causes, notably the transgender debate, which are relevant only to a small minority. What sense does it make to depict JK Rowling as a fascist? To my surprise, Clinton shares the premise of my question. We are standing on the precipice of losing our democracy, Clinton says, and everything that everybody else cares about then goes out the window. Look, the most important thing is to win the next election. The alternative is so frightening that whatever does not help you win should not be a priority. And he specifically used 
elevating the transgender debate, which as we know is an issue in American politics in 2022 because of the Democrats. Yeah, They're the ones who are talking about a lot and making it such a big priority of theirs, doing so much to defend the trans community as they always have with all members of the LGBTQ plus communities. They focus on it so much that it's really on them that it's been elevated so much, Francesca. And so we should dispense with that debate. We should take every trans person in America and throw them in the garbage if that's what it takes to beat the, the Republicans. That's what Clinton says. No, it's it, it's a really important point, John, and uh, it takes nothing for her to just disagree with that premise. It takes nothing for her to say, hey, <laughs> given that it's Pride Month and I usually don't think about trans people unless there's rainbow flags in my face. Um, how about we not on this one little thing? Um, but then she can pivot and agree with him on other stuff. She can throw progressives under the bus, she loves doing that. She could continue to do what she always does, but no, she's including um, the sort of it's, it seems like pet issue of uh, trans people living their lives. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I think this is so important right now because even if you were to accept the premise that trans issues are a massive distraction and somehow preventing us from stopping fascism, not uh, Joe Manchin and his you know pockets being lined with coal money or Kirsten Cinema or anything else like that or a weak president, the Democrats have no plan. The leading Democrats have literally no plan to stop us from falling off the precipice of democracy. And every time they're asked, it's, well, why didn't you vote? Well, it's just yeah. the voters. And they're like, okay, okay. What about the massive voter suppression and new voting laws that are being enacted, even by people who do agree that the 2020 election legitimately was won by Biden? Like, like it, what about the SCOTUS? What about rights being stripped away as we speak? What is their plan? And yet we never know. get, we never get to kick it back to them. Is all I'm saying. Like, like no one is putting someone, no one's getting a long interview about how Clinton's dropped the ball when it came to defending our fundamental rights, or Obama, or you know, or Biden, yeah. or any other Democrat. And yet she gets to hit. You know, now, oh, yeah, please jump on the pile of rich people who want to like go after trans people. There's, yeah. there's plenty of them. Or don't want to go after them, but don't care that other people are, and are perfectly fine with them being uh, either again, best case scenario, pushed entirely into the shadows. Uh, worst case scenario, uh, killed, or or have uh, the, the access to you know medical transition care and those sorts of things made impossible to afford. Basically, yeah. um, that's what she's perfectly fine for. And isn't it odd? That she is fine, that communities she's not a part of are being targeted. It's weird. It's the first time a rich person has ever felt that way. Anyway, I mean, right. What if the follow up? Uh, yeah, well, I'm just going to say, what if the follow up was like totally right? And like abortion rights, like, oh my God, blah, 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 right? Yeah, like, oh, wow, why say? are you elevating that conversation about reproductive rights and all that? Exactly. And by the way, it's it's not only a stupid point to pretend that that. I don't even know what the trans debate is supposed to be. It's about whether you can exist or not. But let's say that there was a trans debate. It's not only stupid to say the Democrats are the ones that elevated it. But if no Republican ever mentioned a trans person in the trans community, which is almost true anyway, all it takes for a solid week of the right wing, like trying to shred the community is that the the fact that there is a trans kindergarten teacher somewhere. Lives of TikTok will elevate the fact that there is a trans person, and that's a week of Tucker Carlson monologues and Matt Walsh railing against the community as he masturbates under the table. That's all it takes. It doesn't take Obama talking about it. And Hillary Clinton, for all of her issues, is not so dumb that she doesn't get that, which right. makes one wonder why she would be saying something that she couldn't possibly believe. Anyway, with that, unfortunately, we are running out of hours, so we're going to take a quick uh, break. We'll be back after this. Okay, we're about to get into just the dumbest, weirdest news of the weekend. I just felt like I had to get into this. So, so let's let's start this thing off. Over the weekend, Joe Biden committed his worst error of his presidency when he tried to ride a bicycle. Take a look. Oh, 
Okay, so he, he fell off his bike. It doesn't matter, despite it being everywhere. And that's not why we're here today. The fact that he fell off the bike, fundamentally. Uh, it's because of something that I saw. And it just made me think, when I saw the video I'm about to play for you, how fundamentally weird of a time we're in. I mean, we're in a time that can be described in a lot of different ways. Uh, totally uh, hateful and hopeless and depressing and a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But it's really weird. Here is something that Trump shared on Truth Social. Okay, coming from Trump, that's mildly funny. Obviously, he didn't make it. Some incel made it and he stole it and didn't even credit him. So that's fun. Um, but isn't it weird? Trump lost the presidency to Biden. He was so aggrieved that he lost the presidency that he decided that the multi century experiment with peaceful transfers of power needed to come to an end. So he brought a mob of people to the Capitol to kill his own vice president and overturn the results of the election. He wanted to end America effectively to stay president. And now, a year and a half later, he shares a video of him golfing and it knocks Biden off of his bicycle. Doesn't that seem like those two things shouldn't exist in the same universe? No, they do, because it's just, it's a joke. Everything's mm -hmm. a joke until Mike Pence is being put into a guillotine. Oh, then it's like, no, nah, but this is still a joke. Wait a minute. Is that a real? Gu oh, there's a, it's coming down. Oh, but it's a joke. Oh my God. See, that's a fake head. That's not real. He's still um, blinking. That's fake. He can still blood. blink. That's, that's a joke. Blood. It's all a joke. No, it, it, it is. I mean, I have to say, I've never found Biden more relatable as someone who, someone who learned to ride a bike at like 12. <laughs> And like definitely still falls as an adult. He also had the little like his, you know, the little pedals that are lock your foot in. And that's that's for Peloton, man. That's not for like a <laughs> bike ride. I what think are you doing, bro? I'm not a I'm not a cool biker. I don't use the clipless pedals or whatever. Anyway, he says he Biden said at one point in response to any of you guys ride bikes. Well, they have some that have this thing. You put your toe in, it restrains your foot so it doesn't slide off the pedal. I was getting off the bike and it got stuck on the right side. I fell if you didn't notice. <laughs> and he actually whispered that part. <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. By the way, this is like you're in good company. In 2004, George W. Bush fell off his bike in Crawford, Texas. The next year, he crashed into a police officer during a bike ride in Scotland. In 2015, John Kerry broke his leg while biking. It is a menace. And by the way, I'm gonna teach you something. Did you know that nearly 1,000 bicyclists die and there's over 130,000 injuries and crashes that occur on roads in the US every year? The total cost of these injuries and deaths exceed $23 billion. When you're driving, keep an eye out for bicyclists. Also motorcyclists, by the way, but keep an eye out. I was gonna say like, it was, they're, they're mostly the cause of cars. It's the car's fault. Usually it's not because, mm -hmm. People the fatally, ran into fatally <laughs> fell over as they were coming to yes. a stop. Yeah, no, Biden is gonna be just fine. It's not a great sign and he still does need to not run in 2024, but maybe not specifically for this. Oh, he's anyway, fine, I said, mean, yes, but yes, okay. Yes. Okay, with that said, let's go to some, look, this, this issue isn't as substantive or as important as the bike thing, but let's talk about it, okay. Amazon is facing a new issue and it's that, in the relatively near future, there might be nobody for them to hire because they've burned through the entire US workforce. That seems absurd. It seems like something out of some sort of like dystopic sci fi novel, but no, it's real. They're worried that this could happen in two years. By the time the next presidential election runs around, they might have to be re upping employees that they burned through and then they might have to rehire them. They said, um, according to a research report, if we continue business as usual, we will deplete the available labor supply in the US network by 2024. Also calling it the US network just seems so cyberpunkian. Anyway, Amazon didn't refute the contents of the report. This seems to be accurate. They said that in certain locales, the issue is particularly bad. Uh, in Phoenix, Arizona, they're like by the end of last year, they'll have gone through everyone they could conceivably hire. The Inland Empire region, which isn't far from here uh, in California, uh, by the end of this year, their attrition rate was 123% in 2019. 
it had risen two years ago to 159%, which if we could bring up this graphic, you'll see is significantly higher than the usual. Usually you do burn out a good percentage of your employees, but not going through more than all of your employees per year. That is yeah. not actually normal. Now there are things that can be done to fix this problem. They consider these novel solutions like raising wages. They also might want to increase warehouse automation, which I guess is a solution. You don't have to replace an employee when you've made the employee redundant, I suppose. But anyway, those are some of the levers they're considering pulling on to fix this problem. But the big issue, Francesca, is obviously that it clearly sucks to work there and isn't worth the money if so many people are quitting every single year. Right, and this is with $15 an hour after Bernie Sanders like harangued them forever, right? Like this is yeah. with like certain benefits. Like even then, Amazon is a crap place to work. And it's just so, it is so totalitarian and insane that a company that large could burn through a work. Inland Empire is huge. Like there's yeah, a lot the of area. people there. And the fact that they could burn through the workforce by the end of the year is crazy. It's a testament to how horrible they are. And so, and it's just a problem I never considered. I was like, what does that even mean? And I think Amazon, like so many corporations right now, are in a moment, right, where they cannot fully automate. AI is so far behind, and whatever else you'd need to replace actual people. And we've got I would say a 20, 30 year gap here. And I think workers in the last years have been showing, including workers at Amazon, that hell no, that gap is ours. This is our time uh, to actually rise up and say, you, we know you're far away from automating our jobs away. And we actually know that automation more so than immigration is the biggest threat to working class jobs and to good jobs. And we know that you need us, hence the ball is in our court right now. And so. Yeah. Amazon's pissed at like, oh man, you guys don't operate like robots. Like you guys, you know, <laughs> like even the robots, if there were robots, they'd be like, I must cool down. You know what I mean? Like if it were the MacBook would be like, we're in the sun too much, you know, whatever it says. That's, <laughs> That's what mine true. says. It says, I'm yeah. in the sun. <laughs> My phone actually shut down because of that. Yeah. Uh, we don't treat people as well as we treat a phone on a hot day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, here's an idea uh, uh, three day prime, no more two day. Just make it three, we can wait. No more same day stuff, seriously. No. If, you, there's, if you need it same day, there are stores. Honestly, Absolutely. and I, I've go used to it. A store. Yeah, seriously, I mean, I don't want to, because you see people <laughs> when you go to stores, but I don't know, maybe make the work not so grindingly depressing and, and may, maybe make it so it, you're not churning through people. You could actually do that. And by the way, could, could you raise the wages? Yes, should you raise, raise the wages? Yes, is that necessarily gonna fix the problem though? I don't know, like at a certain point when people, like it used to be a thing back when I was in college, FedEx was the place in, in place of Amazon at that point. That was easy, you could, you could go there easily, you made okay money, mm -hmm. but you worked there for about three months and then your body was destroyed, okay? <laughs> right, It right. doesn't have to be that way though, you no. could switch it up. We don't need things as quickly as you're sending them. You've made us used to that, we could get used to the opposite. In the same way that we've gotten used to remote work, we could get used to no two day prime, maybe. Absolutely, let people anyway, go to the bathroom when they wanna go to the bathroom and a million other things. Let them do that. Okay, everyone on the linear platforms and on the podcast, thank you so much for listening and watching. We really do appreciate it. We got way more show though, so don't go anywhere. Francesca and I will be back after this. Uh, Clinton is frustrating. On the other hand, Spiral C asked a question in the chat while we were doing that. It says, please tell me she's not allowed to run for president again, please. No, she's totally allowed to run for president again. But she at least implies that she will not. In the interview, she was asked about it and she said that she wouldn't. Now, they say that constantly and they don't mean it. And if Biden didn't run, is it inconceivable that she would try again? No, <laughs> her arrogance knows no bounds. And would she be any more likely to beat Trump? I can't conceive of why she would, but she says she's not gonna run. Also, she was asked uh, why she thinks she lost. And uh, at least in the summary that Financial Times provided, she didn't point to Bernie, so that's progress, I guess. Ooh. She didn't pretend that it was his fault. She said a bunch of stuff, but, and she didn't mention the fact that she had campaigned in key states that she should have. There's a lot of stuff she could have mentioned, 
It shouldn't mention you know elevating Trump as a candidate, thinking it was a winning political strategy. Anyway, I'll take the progress where I can. Thanks for listening to the full episode of The Damage Report. Support our work, listen ad-free, access members-only bonus content, and more by subscribing to Apple Podcasts at apple.co slash TYT. I'm your host, John Adarola. I'll see you soon.